We're betting the worst team in football is over win total, and here's why. Looking at their schedule, outside of just a couple games against some of the better teams in the league, every matchup kind of looks winnable. I agree. I agree. They got some good new additions as well, Javon. They add Deontay Johnson to that wide receiver group. Lord knows they could use some help for sure um, with some people catching some balls besides Adam Thielen. They also added Robert Hunt. They threw him the bag as well. Big addition to that offensive line and a couple rookies as well. Xavier Leggett, Jonathan Brooks. We might not see for a while, but they got plenty of running backs as well to fill the voids and fill the gaps. And let's not sleep on Jatavion Sanders as well. Javon, any other improvements this year that you're looking at making you like the Panthers? The obvious one would be the coaching staff. As a Bucks sure. fan, I am very familiar with Dave Canales and what he brings. He's uh, revitalized the careers of a couple different quarterbacks from Geno Smith to Baker like we saw last year. Now he gets his chance to work with only the sophomore year, Bryce Young. Sure. Look, I want to buy low on Bryce Young as well. People forget only a couple of years ago, this was the best quarterback in college. He went first before C.J. Stroud, right? And then we see Stroud shine, and it's taken Bryce Young a while to get going here. People are already calling for his head after one bad season. Let's give this kid a chance. He had a terrible coaching staff. He didn't have a chance. He didn't have any players around him. I want to buy low on Bryce Young this year, Javon, with a new coaching staff that's got a QB guru that could help improve his play in year two. I am hyped to see it. I want to buy low on Bryce Young. And it definitely helps that they were terrible last year, so they have a last-place schedule. And when you look at the NFC South, I think the Saints are going to be pretty bad. The Falcons are a work in progress. I think the Bucs will regress a little bit from last year. So I think they can get at least three wins from the NFC South just against Ooh. those teams. Well, that is a big hot take that most people probably wouldn't agree with, Javon. But I trust you and I believe you. Let's dive through their schedule and see if we could find six or more wins in the 2024 season, Javon. Their win totals at five and a half. The over has actually gotten a little bit more juicy as we've gotten closer to the season. Now we're seeing consensus minus 115 to that over, which is beautiful to see because who the heck believes in this team and why the heck are they catching steam on the over after being the worst team in football in 2023? Let's take a peep at their schedule. Let's see if we can sniff out six or more wins, Javon. I have a feeling we're going to be able to do it. All right, they start out week one at New Orleans. Javon, how do we think this plays out? Uh, most people would probably pick the Saints here in this spot. Yeah, not me. I think they go into the Superdome and beat the Saints week one. Again, like I've seen this division play out so many different times. And even going back to like the Ryan Fitzmagic days with the Bucks, he went into the Superdome week one and put almost 50 on the Saints heads. Weird things happen in these early season divisional games, especially in the Superdome. I think they beat them. And I think the fact that they're only getting about five points right now on that spread in New Orleans is a great sign for the Panthers backers. I'll surely be on their spreads week one on the roads in New Orleans, right? That's not a team that I believe in down there in the Saints. And honestly, their division, personally, I think is wide open, right? There is an avenue for this Panthers team. And Javon, you're saying they get out started right with a W, one and now, after taking a trip to New Orleans. What about after week two, when they face off against the Chargers at home, Coach Harbaugh comes into town, no chance they win the first two games in a row to start the season, right? I think there's definitely a chance. I think they start two and one here. They can drop one of okay. these games against the Chargers and Raiders, but it's hard not to be optimistic about them playing the Chargers at home, especially with all the uncertainty around the Herbert injury to this point. Who knows if he's even going to be fully healthy by that point? They say he will be, but we don't know that yet. So I think there's potential for a two and zero start here, Krabs. Wow. Might be the only people on the planet saying those words. The Panthers start two and zero, and that's the exact spot we want to be in, Javon. Um, all right, so we can hand them a loss at Vegas in week three then, right? And we could kind of assume they start out hot, right? They get that big win in New Orleans, pull off the upset, and they probably win one of the next two games. We'll give them a W against the Chargers at home and then an L in week three at Vegas. Kind of a weird game. Um, and they got to play on the road there as well. So two and one through the first three weeks. I'm still liking their chances to catch that over five and a half win total. That's for sure. What about a matchup against Cincinnati, right? At home, week four. Is there any chance they pull off an upset against Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow, or can we go ahead and hand them a loss in this game? Definitely go and hand them a loss. I think these okay. next couple weeks will be relatively tough games where they could start to come back down to normal a little bit. So, yes, I'd say they lose to the Bengals. All right, so they're 2-2 two and two through week four after that loss to the Bengals. Then they play at Chicago. That's a tough matchup as well. There's going to be eyes on it. Right, Caleb Williams versus Bryce Young. People are going to be asking questions, right? Um, honestly, questioning Bryce Young's legacy after an atrocious rookie year. But 
You don't think he's going to be motivated to play against Caleb Williams? Is there any shot they win that game in week five? Or do we hand them a close loss in Chicago? There's a shot because there's, again, another team in the Bears that there's a lot of uncertainty around because we don't know what Caleb's going to be. It's a whole new team in general, but I don't think they're winning in Chicago. Give them an L there, too. Okay. So three straight losses in a row after a nice 2-0 and start. Then they play Atlanta at home, Javon, in week six. Are they going to upset Kirk Cousins at home here? First matchup against Kirk in the Falcons Uni. Any chance they pull off a W – or are they going to continue to slide after a nice start to the year? So I do think they beat the Falcons, but I think it comes in week 18 rather than week six. I was leaning their way until I looked at the schedule, and I did see that the Falcons do have a Thursday night game against the Bucs right prior to this, so they're going to get them on a little long week, a little rested. So I'll give the edge of the Falcons in this one, but a little foreshadowing, okay. not in week 18. All right, maybe that week 18 game will be a night game. We know Kirk Cousins struggles in prime time. Looking at week six, though, 425 Eastern start. Kirk might be just fine in that matchup. We'll have the Panthers at two and four through the first six weeks of the season. And they take a trip to D.C. Hey, come on down to the DMV. All right. Uh, make yourselves welcome. That should be a, probably going to be a really close game. Um, we've still got a couple people from the Carolina organization lurking in Washington from the Ron Rivera era. So these teams probably don't love each other, but that era is done, thank God. And the commanders under Jane Daniels should be a little bit better in 2024. Can we hand the Panthers a loss against my commanders, Javon, here? I feel like there's no way I can verbally say the words, the commanders lose to the Panthers here. I feel like we have to give them another loss on the stretch, yeah. right? And I'll okay. group these two road games <laughs> in. I, I personally do think the commanders are in, in business for a loss, but I think they win one of these two road games. Um, so I guess just in name, we can say they lose to the commanders and maybe beat the Broncos sure. next week. Sure. Yes. How about they go on the road and hand Sean Payton and whoever the heck is playing QB out there, a loss in week eight, Javon. And that brings this Panthers team after a couple straight losses in a row. It's not looking too hot. It's five straight L's, a nice little W bring them back in the win column. And they're three and five still sitting pretty to try to cash that five and a half win totals, right? Even after five straight losses in a row. Early on in the season, we still see a path for this Panthers team under new coaches and in year two of Bryce Young to figure it out and win six plus wins. And we're just getting started here. All right. Three and five, Javon, um, through the first seven weeks. Then they have a tough matchup against New Orleans again. Are we giving them a win once again against New Orleans? No chance they sweep them. I think there's a chance they sweep them. I think there's a chance that the wow. Saints team ends up being really, really bad. I don't want to say yep. comparable to the Panthers last year, but I think they're going to be a lot worse than people think. So I think there's definitely a sweep in the cards for the Panthers. It is very wow. possible. So I want to give them the win. You did say earlier you see three-plus wins in their division and a sweep against the um, overrated, in my opinion, Saints. Could be exactly what the doctor ordered, right? So we'll give them a win there. Don't let them get hot. It might be too late. Two straight wins at Denver and then against New Orleans at home brings this Panthers team to four and five. We're going to be sitting there at that point of the season, Javon, after week nine thinking, is there a chance this Panthers team can hang around at the end of the season? Is there a chance Bryce Young? No way Bryce Young gets to a playoffs or a wild card spot, but they'll be sitting at four and five after week nine and people are going to be very surprised to see it, right? I feel like the majority of people going through the first games here, or at least their divisional games, might be just handing the Panthers losses without even looking at the new additions to this team or the new benefits of the coaching staff. But I think there's a nice little avenue for them to get hot after a tough opening stretch to begin the season, right? We had them losing five straight games. How about a couple straight wins in a row? And then they play the Giants week 10, Javon, Sunday, November 10th. Is there any chance they win three games in a row? I mean, look, they're playing against the Giants, right? Nothing special. <laughs> I think the theme of the season is kind of ride the ebbs and flows with the Panthers just because of how the schedule lines itself up. Like I think they can get out to a hot start, then they play some tougher teams, and then now this is like the second little avenue for them to get on a little run. This game is going to be in, in Germany, so we all know weird things happen in those games that are overseas, and I think as not weird as it may seem for the Giants to lose a game, I think the Panthers can win that game too. And that's big so for them because I think we see the the streak coming up for them, these couple teams. Wow. Well, that puts them at five and five through the first 10 weeks of the season, Javon, heading into a bye week. I mean, if you told the Panthers right now and the Panthers fans that they'd be sitting at five and five 
through the first 10 weeks of the season, uh, they would call you crazy. They would try to check you into a mental institution, right? They would not see any sort of reason in it, but you know, you buy low on some of these teams in the NFL, knowing that very rarely do teams go over and, you know, buy into this new coaching staff and Bryce Young, who still has all the talent in the world. They just haven't put the pieces around them. I think this team can shock some people in 2024. And we've got them sitting at five and five through the first 10 weeks heading into a bye week, which could be massive at that point, because then they have some tough games, right? Then they got to go play Kansas City, Javon, in week 12. We could probably hand them a loss against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs there, right? No chance we're getting cute. I can guarantee I'll be on the points in that spot because that is the Chiefs are coming from Buffalo the week before in a game that you can only assume they're they're probably going to win because they own the Bills for no reason. But mm. that game's probably going to be close for no reason. The Panthers are not okay. going to win that, though. I could so see that, right? Panthers spreads, but Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs find a way to win. Panthers 5-6 and six through Week 12. Then they got a matchup against your Tampa Bay Bucs, Javon. Are they pulling off the win at home? Against Baker Mayfield and Co. I do think this is where they yeah. get a win. I think they split with the Bucks, and I'll yep. give them the nod playing them in Carolina. So yeah, give me another win here. That's fair. A split against the Bucks, although they were in the playoffs last year. I feel like that's one of the least crazy things we've said back in the Panthers here so far on this video, right? So I could see them sweeping the Bucks divisional matchup, right? Or at least splitting, right? At least getting that split. They have to. Yes. I could see that. All right. So they are six and six through the first. 12 games of their season when they already have their bye under their belt. Then they got to go play at Philly. Although I'm more than down to fade Jalen Hurts and that fraudulent Eagles team, Javon, I just don't see them winning that game. I think they're six and seven after that game in Philly week 14. Yes. And they get back-to-back -back games at Philly and then at home against the Cowboys. Those are two of the four teams they face with double digit win totals. So not that we all don't know that the, the Eagles and Cowboys are going to be good, but one of the indications of getting those back-to-back -back weeks, not good. I think those are both losses on the schedule, Krabs. So we'll give them a loss at Philly. We'll give them a loss at home against Dallas. That puts them at 6-8. and eight. Then they got three games left. Javon, does this team finish off the season strong? Do they win out and maybe sneak into the playoffs? Probably not. But who gives a shit? At this point, they've already cashed their win total. They've got six wins with three games left on the season. We're counting our guap, counting our guap, laughing at all the people who didn't tell this play and we still got nearly a month left of the NFL season, right? So let's go through the rest of these games just to humor the people uh, who are watching, right? But we've already got them winning six. Do we think they win against Arizona at home on December 22nd? I feel like that'll be a high-scoring, weirdly close game. Could be a coin flip. Yeah, I feel like that game will be super entertaining, and I think it's it's definitely very winnable. Um, I'll give the nod to the Cardinals, though, just because I feel like the ceiling with the Cardinals is a lot higher than – some people realize, and we don't really know how it's all going to play out yet with Kyler Murray. Hopefully he stays healthy to that point. But, yeah, give me the cards in that one. Sure. All right, we'll hand the Panthers a loss there against the Cardinals in Week 16. That puts them at 6-9. and nine. Then they play at Tampa Bay. You had them winning it against Tampa earlier. You want to give them a loss here? So they split with the Bucks, puts yep. them at 6-10. and 10, And then they head into the last week of the season. You already mentioned this earlier. You've already seen it. The Panthers winning on the road last week of the season against Kirk Cousins, potentially maybe some playoff implications for either one of these two teams, probably more likely for Atlanta, but maybe the Panthers could play spoiler and hand Kirk Cousins a loss on prime time if that game gets flexed. If it means something, I wouldn't be shocked if it does. Either way, Javon, we're giving them a win at Atlanta to close out the season, much improved after 2023 when they were the worst team in the NFL. We've got the Panthers going 7-10 and in 2024 being very conservative going over their schedule, to be completely frank. We could even add a couple more wins in here if we wanted to, maybe putting this team closer to 500. But to be conservative and as realistic as possible, Javon, 7-10, and 10, clearing this win total. I mean, we're going to have a couple weeks at the end of the season uh, when we're looking at what we're going to spend our money on because the bet already cashed. It's too easy, right? Should we pick a harder one? Is there another team we can go over where it's going to be a little more sweaty? And the Panthers, five and a half wins. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. And it, it may seem crazy to some people because I guess in name, like all of these wins are technically upsets because this is a team that won two games last year. So they're going to be dogs. And you would think nearly every game until we get to the back end of the schedule. And I guess Vegas starts realizing they're a little better than that team last year. But yep. I really don't think it's that crazy. This team is much improved. And I think Bryce Young doesn't even have to have to make a jump to where he's cj stroud level i think he's going to make enough of a jump to where this team is going to show serious improvement across the board 
Yep. Well, we're probably the only people on earth who have the Panthers winning this many games, but that's the exact spot I want to be in, Javon, on an island with you and the Panthers over win total when nobody believes in them. Let's buy low on Bryce Young and a new coaching staff down there in Carolina. And to all of our listeners watching this video, let us know in the comments what team you want us to cover next. Thank you guys for listening and watching. We'll be seeing.